Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be looking at Antarctica for your AQA A-Level Environmental Science. A-Level Environmental Science, Topic 1, The Living Environment. Lesson 7, Antarctica. We are now moving on to the next section of the living environment topic, where we will look at specific habitats. For each habitat, we will look at its ecological features, importance to human society, threats it is currently facing, and methods used to conserve it. This is a great opportunity in the specification to find your own case studies of organisms that live in the biomes which we are going to look at. Biome is a key word that needs to go in your glossary. A biome is a large, distinct ecological area with specific climate and vegetation, influencing the distribution of biodiversity in a region. We have seven biomes that we're going to look at. Antarctica, temperate broadleaf woodland, tropical rainforest, deep ocean reefs, coral reefs, oceanic islands, and mangrove forests. Antarctica, where is it and what is it? Antarctica is the only polar landmass, a large continent that is surrounded by the ocean, located at the South Pole. You do not find polar bears here, they are at the North Pole in the Arctic Ocean. You do, however, find multiple penguin species. What are Antarctica's ecological features? This is some key facts that we need to know about what the ecosystem is like there. An ecosystem is a community of living organisms, plants, animals and microorganisms, interacting with their physical environment, such as soil, water and air, and functioning as a unit within a defined geographic area. Antarctica's ecological features. Antarctica is a massive landmass around 60 times the size of the UK, and ice and snow covers almost 99% of its surface. The average temperature is around minus 49 degrees Celsius, and the landscape has a very high albedo due to the light colour of ice and snow. However, we are currently seeing very large fluctuations in the amount of ice cover throughout the year as temperatures rise. There is very little precipitation, so therefore very limited terrestrial, land-based life, and there are no permanent human inhabitants, only those that live there intermittently while completing research. Due to its position at the poles, Antarctica receives 24 hours of sunlight in summer and 24 hours of darkness in winter. You can see why it would be difficult for terrestrial plants to survive here. There is also a high concentration of nutrients in the waters surrounding Antarctica, as they are brought up by the upwellings of cold, nutrient-dense water. These nutrients are vital in supporting the entire food web of the area by providing nutrition to the producers. We will look at how global climate change is affecting ocean currents during the atmosphere topic in detail, but essentially we are seeing the slowing of the currents that drive these upwellings. If the upwelling were to stop, then it would cause the collapse of the entire Antarctic food web. Why is Antarctica important and why does it need conserving? Conserving Antarctica. Antarctica is a huge store of fresh water, which is a large reservoir in the water cycle. It also acts as a temperature buffer due to the high albedo surfaces reflecting UV away from the Earth. Permafrost here is also a huge carbon store, which would see huge releases of greenhouse gases if it melts. We also obtain food species from in and around Antarctica waters such as fish. There are also thought to be large deposits of crude oil underneath Antarctica, which are not currently extracted, but could be required in the future as we continue to deplete other supplies. Antarctica is also a hub for research activity. With no permanent human inhabitants, it offers a unique opportunity to research fairly undisturbed wildlife. It also offers clear information on the impact of climate change and global warming by measuring levels of ice and snow as well as glacial movement. There is a huge population of phytoplankton, single-celled photosynthesizers, in the Antarctic waters, and there is potential for the discovery of new resources such as medicines or genetics. It is important to protect the habitat and all species in it, as there may well be a resource that there could be a huge benefit to the human population in the future. Threats Antarctica is facing. Ozone depletion. Ozone is a molecule found in the stratosphere that forms the ozone layer. Its role is to absorb UV light to prevent it reaching the Earth's surface. This is beneficial as UV can cause genetic mutations as well as skin cancer. Ozone depletion is quite severe over Antarctica, which means more UV is reaching the surface here and putting the phytoplankton in surface waters at risk of dying, which again could cause the collapse of the entire food chain. 
Ozone depletion is so severe here due to the low temperatures forming ice clouds, which act as a surface for a chemical reaction to take place and release harmful chlorine radicals from chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, which can both break ozone molecules and prevent the formation of new ones. CFCs have been banned from production, but their high persistence means they have remained in the atmosphere for a long time. Tourism. As amazing as tourism can be, it can also be damaging if not done properly, with the needs of the ecosystem in mind. For example, boats arriving of people from other countries could introduce pathogens or parasites, as well as disturb natural wildlife if they get too close. There is also the pollution that can be left behind, such as litter on the land or sewage or fuel released into the ocean. Another reason that people visit Antarctica is to complete scientific research. Their presence will require the building of lodgings and labs, which will pollute the area with noise, dust and light, to name but a few. Fishing. Fishing has occurred in Antarctic waters for many years, which has led to the decline in many populations, as we are overfishing. This means we have been harvesting them at a faster rate than the population can replenish itself. An example of this is the whaling industry, which has almost caused the extinction of multiple whale species. It is not only the amount we are harvesting, but the methods we use to do so. Using long lines that float on the surface have always attracted albatrosses and other predators to eat the caught fish, which often leads to them being caught too. This is known as bycatch, as it is accidental catch, but can still lead to population decline. As mentioned earlier, there is also a large deposit of crude oil underneath Antarctica, as well as other deposits of copper and platinum. As we continue to deplete our current sources, the pressure to exploit these will exponentially increase, as with increasing rarity, prices skyrocket so more money is available to harvest the resources. Currently, exploitation is banned, but this can be difficult to enforce and other countries may prove determined to mine here. Global climate change. As temperatures are rising, we are seeing the speed at which ice sheets break up increasing. As they melt, meltwater is produced which acts as a lubricant that can increase the speed at which glaciers move towards the ocean. If they get there, it can cause sea level rise as well as reduce salinity, as it is the addition of fresh water which dilutes the salt. These ice sheets are important habitats, so will of course impact the organisms that live there, making it more difficult for them to hunt or move around. The rising temperatures are also causing species to complete rain shifts to find suitable temperatures again. An alarming example of this is the king crab, which are migrating north and becoming invasive in lots of different habitats. As a result, we are seeing declines in native species population and increases in the population of king crab. If left unchecked, this could cause catastrophic losses to biodiversity. What is being done to protect Antarctica? The Antarctic Treaty is an agreement signed by over 50 countries to try and protect Antarctica. It covers all damaging activities such as fishing, where quotas are set and monitored due to the banning of mineral extraction. It is also illegal to complete military training of any kind and leave any waste. Strict guidelines have also been put in place for the tourism industry, which companies must adhere to. Only one cruise ship is allowed to dock at a time, and there is a limit to the number of guests allowed on land at once. All guests must be accompanied by a trained guide for the entire duration of their visit and must remain at least five metres from any wildlife. They also suggest the use of protective clothing, for example, shoe covers to prevent the introduction of non-native species. There are lots of documents available on the Antarctic Treaty, so we recommend doing some research and building a case study as this is a commonly asked question in the exam. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches.